Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a new and interesting keyboard from Keyboom, the Loop 65. And now I first saw this, I believe on Instagram, and I was like, is that a concept? But no, it was already a made keyboard and quite a few of you guys asked me to take a look at it to see what I thought of it. So I reached out to Keyboom and thankfully they were nice enough to send me out a unit for review. So today we're taking a look at the Loop 65, an aluminum 65% with an interesting design and QMK. As soon as I hear or see QMK, my ears perk up because I know it's a keyboard that not only can I customize the way that it looks, the way that it sounds, but also the way that it works. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got in the box. All right, so before taking a look at the keyboard, I'd like to take a look at what's included in the box. So let's go ahead and take a peek. All right, so we do have a manual that comes in multiple different languages. So that's why it has the folder or the poster like fold out. I haven't actually seen one of these in quite some time, I must say. We have an Allen wrench. We have a standard wire switch and keycap puller and we have a standard USB-A to USB-C cable. And here we are with the Kibu Loop 65 in a black gray version. So they have the purple pink and the black gray. So you have two colors. Well, let's see here. Notice this? Yes, this case comes apart in multiple ways, but they do have it shrink wrapped the reason that you might find keyboards like this sometimes is so that you can go ahead and inspect it and make sure that there is no damage to the keyboard. That way, in case there's something that happened and happened in shipping and you've still got it wrapped up, and get, send it back to them. They can take care of it with their manufacturer and get you a replacement unit. So I've inspected it. Everything looks to be in good shape. Uh, we see that we do have a pocket there for the 2.4 gigahertz dongle and it is branded so thankfully we don't have to worry about it if we lose it we will know what keyboard it goes to it has an on and off switch as well as the USB-C connector and of course it does come with a dust cover using a dust cover on your keyboard when not in use will give you a long life with your keyboard always appreciate when a dust cover is included now, I must say, this is an impressive looking keyboard. The finish on here, um, I don't want to say, I don't, I don't recall what it is at the moment, so I don't want to say, but it is silky. Um, I like texture, but at the same time, I also, this feels, feels luxurious, if that's even the right word. I gotta say, I love the keycaps, how they blend right along with the color. The legends, even though they're not as big as they could be, they're nice and centered. Um, it, it really... Oh yeah. Well, I may just have met my favorite 65%. Wow, this sounds lovely. It has a very nice knob. It has a pocket for the 2.4. It has a nice weight. It's definitely substantial, but it doesn't feel like I'm holding a gold brick, something that you know feels a lot heavier than it really needs to be. It's just the right amount of dents. Wow, that space bar is... I, I really like how this sounds. All right, let's go ahead and... Uh peek here and see what we've got underneath the keycaps so it looks like we have i believe this is the keyboom matcha switch so it's a really nice linear 
we have a RGB diffuser and we have very satisfying on the deeper scale um, but a very satisfying bottom out that is nice I've reviewed a couple of Keyman switches in the past and I've got to say they're they've actually got a a decent switch I like the combination of materials and the molding that they're using they come up with some decent switches this is a nice it's light I would guess probably 38 grams but I mean I personally would prefer it a little bit heavier but it has a very nice sound uh, we do have an FR4 plate that is very nice it does appear that we have the hi-fi layers with the PET sheet right above the PCB and the IXPE sheet above that Let's go ahead and pop off the stabilizers here I call these the holy panda stabilizers uh, they're actually pretty good from what I've seen before we do have lubrication inside of the stem as well as just a little bit on the elbow so taking a look inside the PCB it does not appear like we have um, compatibility for screw and stabilizers but we do have an FR4 plate that is gasket mounted even the knob has a satisfying tactile click and feel so again taking a look at the legends they are nice and clean we obviously have die sub keycaps here uh, because of the gradient taking a measure of the keycaps we have them come in at 1.5 millimeters which is quite nice as much as i'm tempted to go ahead and open it up today i i'm working on a 75 percent tier list video but i realize that i also have not as many but some nice 65 percent that have come out in the last basically six to eight months time period and people have asked me you know they're like i know you're doing a 75 percent. well how about 65 percent? so i am going to be including this one in there because i think i mean it's an in-stock keyboard and i i really like it i really like it and because this has i mean looking at 10 10 bolts at least and each of these is a different part each of these are a different part i do really want to get in there but if i'm going to go ahead and take the time to get in there i'm probably going to do some modding um i really really like how this sounds i think that there's a couple of switches that i'm thinking about that i think would also work really nicely so i want to come back to it after i've done the tier list video and i've had the chance to be able to just compare it as stock but right now i've got to say besides another one that i'm waiting on that everybody else just tells me oh this is this is the keyboard to have um this one right now is i mean it's quickly <laughs> from just opening it in the last few minutes to now i i really i just enjoy it i like how it looks i mean the design of it is i want to say modern brutalistic it, it, it reminds me, it's better than anything out of the 80s, but it reminds me of the 80s for some reason. And that's when I was a kid. So that just, that time period that strikes that nostalgia in me, that really just, um, it, it's, it's just a nice, nice looking keyboard. I gotta say, um, it's not often, especially, I mean, I'm looking at a format, a layout that I have, you know a couple of keyboards that follow this this format but the fact that it's actually different pieces it's not just you know different plastic or just painted or something i mean these are different cnc aluminum pieces that have come together so it's like it's like a puzzle it's not only a keyboard which is a tool it's part art part puzzle and I, I don't know, call me, <laughs> I guess you could at this point say I'm a computer geek and 
know that no one's going to be offended. <laughs> um, and I appreciate designs that, I guess, I mean, I said brutalist earlier. I would say more of a minimalism, a modern minimalism. The brutalist is the line. I don't know. I'm not really an art guy. I'm just saying that this, uh, I forget her name, but this sparks joy in me. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Keyboom Loop 65. A three mode aluminum 65% with a knob and QMK VIA. It has a unique six part block build and a two color case. As a gasket mounted flex cut FR4 plate, a south facing three and five pin hot swap compatible PCB with both hi fi layers and plenty of dampening. It is preloaded with Kibu Matcha Latte 2.0 linear switches and Dai Sub PBT Cherry black and gray gradient keycaps. Comes weighing in at 1425 grams and has a battery capacity of 4,000 milliamp hours. The chin of this keyboard sits at 22 and a half millimeters from the typing surface, while the back sits at 32 millimeters, providing for an angle of typing of seven degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $159.99. Links below. All right, so I went to Keyboom's website to download the JSON files for this and, um, Unfortunately, I, I wasn't, I, there are pages for it, but there were just, there's only pictures of the keyboard. Um, and somehow I came, one of them, I link somewhere and it came to this website, which, I mean, it does show up in VIA. I just couldn't find the VIA JSON file. So it came to, I ended up at this site, keyboom.lu ike.com l-e-w-i-k-e.com and it slowly but surely loaded up an interface that though somewhat similar to via wasn't quite via um, it had different profiles um, i tried to save the json file and see if i could load it up in, in via but it was it wasn't a full file now, one thing I did notice about this not via interface is that under key lighting um, or RGB, it actually had custom light. Now, I did go through and set up a custom light and I saved it. Well, I think it saved, but I was never able to actually see it on the keyboard. And when I cycle through the effects on the keyboard, it does not come up. In trying to find the JSON file for this keyboard, I did come across a few different threads, including this one on Reddit that shows that they are aware and that they're, they have a GitHub repo. I still haven't received that. Um, I actually been waiting for a response from Keyboom regarding where the QMK repository can be found because it is listed as a QMK keyboard. Um, the, the PCB, though, does appear to be the same as another keyboard. Um, they basically had, well, they had the same vendor ID, and the product ID was just one byte off. So I tried it, and I was able to change mappings, everything like that. So it does work. It does recognize it as that um, keyboard, and it worked in allows you to load it up in just regular via um, again that one that they have on their website it just seems to be a skinned via but i don't know about that custom rgb i'd have i'll have to look into it a little further to find out how to actually access that if i do save that because i did create you know it, it would be nice to have via with per key rgb so if they figure something out That'd be nice, but it would also be nice if they shared that. So that would be available to everybody. But um, I digress. This is a really nice 65%. Like I said, I look forward to um, taking it apart. But as far as if you would have asked me back when I really 
first started getting into this hobby. Um, yes, I use 60%, but I, if you would have asked me what my favorite layout was, I would say TKL. Now, I've, I guess, grown a lot in since then uh, because I... I vacillate between 75% TKL, 65%. And 65%, don't get me wrong, I can get work done. I can get, you know, do what I need to do. Um, especially if it's a VIA keyboard, I can set it up the way that I need to set it up. So whether it's got the knob or not, it's going to be where I know everything is. Like, I mean, here I basically, because there's no delete key, um, if I keep this keycap set on it, which I mean, that's one thing that would be nice. Uh, I don't see too many manufacturers that do allow, you know, remapping of your keys to actually have a few, you know, few choices granted. I mean, there's a minimum of nine different combinations. If you just stick with these keys and then you're talking about six other keys, there's like 18 different keys you can have in different rows. So I can understand manufacturers going, well, we just include, include extra, no, not a whole keycap set, but at least a few choices right there. Um, but like for me, for this keyboard, I went ahead and mapped function backspace um, to delete and function back page up as insert. So, um, so I have a way of mapping it, but like I said, I'll put a link down to the via file below. Um, I will update it if I, if and when I do get a response from Keyboom regarding, you know, where the GitHub repo is, I will also update that in the description below. But I gotta say, I, I, I do like, I like this keyboard. I like the way that it's built and actually I mean, except for that really cool, like I said, the modern, um, almost brutalistic design. I'm plug it so I don't mess it up. Um, that just, that sharp distinction between the two different colors that just, it's not to sound artsy fartsy, but it's bold. It makes a bold statement, the keycap set along with it. The presentation, I mean, you're, you're taking something that, I mean, I have, Many 65% looking around, realizing there's only one 65% around. And despite, you know, a 65% with a knob being a standard layout, you know, especially with that blocker right there, compacted um, or condensed layout, it's still, for me anyway, that's why this is, again, it's a hobby of very subjective, you know, likes and dislikes. I love the thick bezels all the way around the body. I love the sharp cut off of the angle and the fact that it's different materials. I love that it has a like a blocker piece right there. It reminds me of the Mons Geek keyboards. I love that it's got Maya and hopefully QMK as well. Um, and I love that it's got a knob. And I, I say I actually a big part of it is because it's centered. I, I have a thing about just floating text. If it's going to float, it should float. You know, I don't know. My brain makes it should be in the center. So even the um, modifier keys kind of, I mean, that one may not be a center or it could just be because of the effect of the C against the L. But for the most part, all of the, uh, modifiers even are centered but the legends are centered i just i don't know I, I like the look so the presentation wise it's really nice sound wise it's very pleasant these um keyboom matcha linear i reviewed a couple of keyboom switches i can't recall the name off the top of my head there's so many switches i mean there's so many switches I was honestly very surprised with um, the other switches that I that I reviewed from them that I actually, I think I did a build with the tactile versions of them. But these are, are linear switches. They have beautiful sound. The uh, stabilizers are almost perfectly tuned out of the box. It is a lovely looking keyboard. 
Um, it does appear, like I said, to be QMK. I don't have the repo yet. I will update the description as soon as I do. But it is a three mode, 65% with a knob. QMK via with, honestly, a unique design. There's, there's, I, I haven't seen a split keyboard like that. Like I said, I will um, probably be doing a 65% tier list video as well. So I'm going to leave this stock for right now. I've got a couple, about three, four more different 65% aluminums that are going to be all put up head to head. So after I've done that, I will come back to it, open it up. I really want to see how it's constructed. And we'll see about maybe putting some tactile switches in here, maybe even changing out the keycaps as much as I love them. Um, I got a couple other keyboards that could fit on, so I don't know. But if I do change out the keycaps, then I'll be able to select these keys. And I don't know, there's actually a very tall MT3 keycap set that I'm thinking would look very nice on here. And change the color of that knob out to match it. So anyway, I'm, I'm rambling. I'm going to leave you with a stock sound test of this lovely 65% aluminum keyboard from Keyboom. It is loaded with the Keyboom Matcha Latte Linear Switches and Die Sub Cherry PBT uh, keycaps. Um, so I do hope that you enjoyed the review. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions for something you'd like to, me to take a look at when I do come back to it, please let me know down in the comment section below. I do my best to respond to all comments as soon as possible. For right now, I just want to go ahead and wish everybody out there in YouTube land a wonderful day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.